Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zenata Consulting. Uh, my name is Tyler Colts, and this video is actually a quick little excerpt from our full product walkthrough on Zoho Surveys recorded on October of 2022. Um, in this little excerpt, we're going to be running through some of the more advanced customization inside of Zoho Surveys, um, including some of the page and field logic, as well as some of the automated actions that you can actually trigger based on your survey. Um, before we dive in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. And if you have any comments, questions, or feedback, please leave those in the comments section as well, as we do read and respond to almost every single one of those weekly on our podcast, The CRM Zen Show. Without any further ado, let's get right on into the tutorial. Alrighty, so with that, there are a couple key things that we set up pretty often for people within Zoho surveys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show one of the big ones here now, which is working with logic as you are kind of moving through your various pages. So a lot of the logic here is based on page dependencies. And so I'm going to go ahead and add a second page here. I'm not going to give it a title because I don't want the title to show up right? When they look at the survey, I just want it to be a natural kind of flow through. And so let's imagine that um, if they are not a promoter, right? And so maybe if they're going to be less than seven on our NPS, we want to ask them, what could we do better? Right? But if they're at an eight, nine or 10, we don't need to do that, right? They're already a promoter, we don't want to bother them with another question. Um, but maybe if someone wasn't as happy with us, we want to know what we could improve on. So over here on the left, I'm just going to add a simple kind of multi-line field here where they're able to provide a long form answer. So I'm just dragging that right here into my second page. And we'll just ask, you know, how could we improve our service? And now I'll go ahead and save that. And so now what we'll want to do is essentially set up a logic flow where from this first page, only if they've selected an option below 10 or below seven, right? And we could always set up this type of thing just specifically based on the, um, you know, based on our pages here. But so down underneath in our second page, I'm going to go into the logic section. We're going to look at page skip logic. And we're going to say that if, how likely are you to recommend our service is less than, let's say seven. Then we'll go ahead and skip them to the survey end page. And so essentially what we've done here is say that we're setting up a logic rule on this page where if this previous question is seven or less, um, or actually is less than seven, then we'll go ahead and skip the untitled page that I've set up here with this additional question of how can we improve our service. Um, so. Again, with Zoho Surveys, there's a lot of different places that you can kind of access this type of logic and set up these different skips and rules that kind of control the flow of data between one page to the next. Um, but it's always a good habit to kind of think through, you know, in order to encourage the maximum amount of people to complete the survey, how can we control and only show them certain questions based on what's actually relevant to them, right? Because the more fields that someone sees when they open up a survey, the less likely they are to actually complete those fields um, you know, and, and move forward in the survey. So now that we've set up some of that logic here in our survey fields and pages, um, I'm going to jump to some of the other customization that you can do on a more advanced level based on your surveys. So again, we're going to save the CRM integration. We're going to do that in our next section. Um, so we're going to focus here on our triggers. Um, so again, three different types of triggers that you can set up. Of course, we can set up a triggered email, right? And these can have conditions. So maybe we want to say, again, keeping in mind that, you know, if somebody is already a promoter, we might not need to take much action. 
Um, maybe we want to go ahead and say, how likely are you to recommend our service? Again, we'll do this like less than seven. Wait for this to load. We'll see that it's going to come by default from this main user right, of the account. You can also have it come from a default Zoho survey account or any other authenticated email address that you're able to validate, um, you know, by receiving a code to it and, you know, confirming that you actually own that email. Um, in our two line, we can insert our variables. Here it's suggesting that I use the email field, which is great. That's what I want to do. Um, unfortunately, it does put them in in these kind of funky little tags. Um, so take your time when you're setting these up because it is kind of easy to get lost if you're doing a lot of different merge fields. They're not super intuitive in terms of the names that, that are being provided here. Maybe you want to send an email that says a customer identified that they are not a promoter. And within this email, maybe I want to just go ahead and include the um, any of the parameter names that we have here. Easy way to do it is just do this response, all responses, right? This is basically just going to put like form style data, you know, first name Tyler, last name Colt, email Tyler .com, And it would actually include that multi-line field for what we could improve on that would just go directly out to our team. Um, now in this case, right, I went ahead and put in this merge for the customer. We wouldn't actually want to send this to the customer, right? That was kind of an example, just so you see where you pull it from. Um, we would actually want to send this maybe to like, you know, success at Zanata.com. So that maybe our customer success team could jump in and help out on improving this customer's experience to ideally get them up a little bit so that they could be a promoter for us in the future. Now, like you'll see here, you can set up many different triggers, right? And so maybe you'd want a different trigger that would fire off if they are seven or greater. Right, because maybe that would send something over to the sales team, um, because maybe someone who is a promoter might be a good option um, to refer us more business. Uh, maybe we want to set up some type of affiliate deal with them. Right, so there's a lot you can do based on these types of contextual email notifications that go out from surveys. Um, you know, so keep in mind just that you can do a lot here natively inside of the tool without having to build things externally for these types of follow-up flows. Now, trigger a function, I'm not going to go too deep down here. We'll need to connect it to Zoho Deluge before we're able to run these. That's just a quick little connection. Um, you can do some pretty crazy stuff with the triggers um, and Deluge functions out of Zoho surveys. An example would be that we set up for a client. So when they finished a survey, they actually received an email that contained dynamically created HTML reports based on the data in their survey. It was very, very cool. Basically, it plotted everything in all these different bar charts and pie charts that we uh, configured on the back end, and then it just sent it right out. A big one that we see people use a lot is a webhook. Uh, webhooks, of course, are a pretty universal way to get data out of one system into another on a triggered basis. Um, a common use of a webhook might be when the survey is completed. Maybe we want to post this to Zapier. Right? We've set up some type of webhook triggered flow in Zapier or maybe inside of Zoho Flow. Uh, we would put in our URL here, right? So whatever Zapier gives you. And then we can just run through and define each and every single question and answer that we want to include in that payload, right? So that from here, if you wanted to take this data and write it to some other system, right? Maybe you're using a different marketing platform or a different CRM. Um, right. Of course, you can just capture this data and send it right out to be used in that platform um, rather than just natively having to use it within Zoho surveys. Um, some of the other kind of quick things under a more advanced look at settings here that I will just show while we're kind of looking at these options. Um, within an individual field, you can actually set up what's called display logic. And so display logic is essentially choosing whether or not we need to display an individual question. So rather than an entire page, but an individual question based on certain criteria, right? So of course, in this case, for our net promoter score, we always want to show that. Um, but in some cases, you might only want to have a field conditionally show up 
um, based on the answer of another, right? And so maybe you work in something that's compliance specific. And if the customer is in California, you need an additional file to be uploaded along with the survey, right? You would do something like that through the display logic on that individual field. And then what you can also do is display or hide comments and fields based on this individual question. Again, in this case, we've got a pretty short list of questions here, so we can't go too deep on this. Um, but if you wanted to essentially not allow certain answers to questions based on other logic, um, you could do that natively through those display logic sections. And then up here on the right, again, there are just a couple little options that I'll cover. Um, custom variables, this is really more on a um, delivery perspective. If you wanted to pre-fill any information when you send this, um, you set those up as custom parameters, and then you can go ahead and sneak that data in. So a common one would be something like first, and then I can append first name into the URL. Now, though URL parameters are extremely common, we use them all the time in applications like Zoho Forms. Um, for Zoho Survey, when you're sending from CRM, you actually don't need to do any of these URL parameters. You can just connect it directly to that record. 